few weeks ago, Riverdale, Illinois, was just another quiet, small town. Then on that Saturday, shortly after midnight, a living nightmare began. About an hour before nightfall, my fiance and I were returning from a trip to her family's home in the country. Our wedding date was set. Everything was right with the world. We were on the way back to town to tell the good news to my father. later, in Washington, a hastily summoned UFO committee anxiously awaited to see a special screening of top-secret Army films. Delaying the proceedings was the late arrival of Senator Walter K. Powers. All right, Aaron, let's go. Lights. A ravine six miles south of the town of Riverdale, Illinois. Forty-eight hours ago, discovery was made of a great cone-shaped object. The cone stands 50 feet high, has a base diameter of 50 feet. The nature of the cone, undetermined. Origin, unknown. Efforts made to determine the composition of the cone by Dr. Paul Kettering, principal scientist for Project Damper, have proven futile. The surface of the cone has a total resistance to pressure, Heat, acid. Coincidental with the discovery of the cone is the brutal slaying of several of the town's leading citizens. Townspeople question provided stories of strange sightings on or about the time of the discovery of the cone. One report cited the appearance of a fiery horse-drawn chariot in the sky. All reports inconclusive. As of this report, the origin and the nature of the cone remain Unknown. Lights. (laughs) 
I don't know whether you gentlemen are aware of it, but on directive from the executive branch, I've been given a free hand in the matter of this ship. I want some action. I have the people's interests at heart, but I will not have my hands bound by lack of all the facts. Dan, call the hotel and tell them to pack our things. Then call the airport and charter a plane. We're heading for that little town of Riverdale. I want to see this thing firsthand. Call the signal corps. Get General Prescott on the line. Say that Warwick K. Powers will not tolerate departmental interference. That if that spaceship film has been ducked in any way, he stands in a very shaky position. Lay it on thick. I want him to keep so busy cleaning out his own closet that he won't find time to get in my way out there at that ship. I'll use the old investigation threat. That always works. Good. Garrett! Garrett, I'm going to poke so many holes in that spaceship fairy tale, the lid will be off in 24 hours. Washington had wired ahead that Walter K. Powers was to arrive in Riverdale to take charge of the spaceship investigation. Powers had requested that there be no publicity whatsoever. Mr. Powers? Yes. Dan Walker. How are you? Where's the mayor? Oh, he's not here, Mr. Powers. I'm his son, Glenn Cameron. We wired ahead. Why isn't he here? Well, we've had some disturbing developments here in town, Mr. Powers. As of last night, We've got three murders in our hands. The mayor? No, at least we're hoping against it. He's disappeared, though. There's no word of any kind. Sounds to me like the Department of Law Enforcement has an abundant supply of bunglers. Do I have transportation? All right, let's get out to that ship or cone or whatever it is. safeguard scientific equipment and the scientists whose work had to continue unhampered. Gentlemen, this is Alice Summers, Dad's secretary. She's helping Dr. Kettering with his paperwork. Alice? Mr. Walter K. Powers? Yes. Hi. Dan Walker. Mm -hmm. How is it coming along? Well, Dr. Kettering's all set to go inside the cone. You mean no one's been inside yet? What's the holdup? System, Mr. Powers. That thing may have dangers we don't know of. Can Kettering come down from up there? Well, he and Dr. Weiler are making a test just now. What kind of test? A sonic test. They're sending sound impulses into the tunneling to determine its length. Hmm. I'm going up there. Mr. Powers, Dr. Kettering may not like that. Kepping? You must be Walter K. Powers. I'm Dr. Weiler. I can see that. What's the matter with him? Is he hard of hearing? 39.7 ratio, test negative. Check. Yeah, hello, Powers. I'm Paul Kettering. You know I'm here. I want action. Good. We can use some. So far, our batting average is zero. Not quite zero. I understand this ship had some kind of markings. They were destroyed. That's impossible. First, let me say, we haven't determined whether it is a ship. And as for any markings, before a single hand touched that cone, it was photographed from every conceivable angle. Black and white, color, still, motion picture, spectrographs. Everything's open to your inspection. Who took these photographs? 
My staff and I. Look, this thing is indestructible. To remove any markings, you'd have to alter the surface. And that, Mr. Powers, is impossible. Nothing's indestructible. Give the wind enough time, and it can wear away a mountain. Well, as you can see, not a mar. I've tried everything science knows of. Diamond bit drills, metal eating acids, all with no success. Where does that opening lead? As yet, we don't know. Ship has to have a control room, a place for an engine of some kind, a place for fuel, living quarters. Yeah, well, since we can't determine what it's made of, you can scarcely expect anybody to know what its function is. Since we haven't found out what's on the other side of the metal by penetrating it, we can't find out what's down inside the tunneling. What's this? What's it mean? It means the tunnel is cyclic. Is what? The point of origin becomes the point of return. I can do without the double talk. I don't like to push you, Kettering, but you science boys tend to get all wrapped up in your test tubes, and the obvious things escape your attention. I've got to have something to report. I want action, not theories. I want to know what's on the inside of that ship. Well, I suppose now's as good a time as any. Don't you think it wise to be armed? Come on now. What's really on the inside of that thing? I don't know. Dr. Weiler, it has been a long time. Could anything have gone wrong? I don't know. How long has he been in there? Too long. Are you all right? A little the worse of for wear. What did you find? Nothing. Nothing? It's tunneling all the way through, spiral, like a toy railroad train, up and down, over and over again. Well, the thing has some purpose. What's it for? Yeah, I don't know. Hello? Hold the line. Glenn, it's the sheriff. Yeah? The mayor's back. Still up there. Let's go up. Hey, Ryan, stay put and keep your eyes open. Let me alone. Let me alone. Dad, are you? 
you all right? Dad, you had us worried. You left no word. I left word with Alice. Alice, didn't you give him my message? Mayor Cameron, you didn't say anything to me. Oh, didn't I? I was sure I had. Where you been all this time, Mayor? Cameron, I'm all the Cape Powers down from Washington. I'm here to keep this spaceship business in check. Don't you think you picked a very poor time to absence yourself from office? Washington is not running this town. I am. But Dad, Mr. Powers is only trying to help. Are you siding against your father? Sorry, Dad, but... You don't look well. I, I feel fine. You do look kind of pale, Mayor Cameron. I'm not sure you're welcome in this town anymore, Dr. Kettering. Now, hold on, Cameron. If I have to push my weight around, I will. Riverdale's not a republic. It's part of the USA. One telephone call from me and this town goes under martial law. Now, let's not make... Get out! All of you, get out! Mr. Powers, please wait. Dad, there is something the matter. What is it? I said get out! And keep away from that door! Wait a minute! What's going on here? What is that on the back of your neck, Mayor? There's... There's nothing on my neck. I say there is. Do you mind if I take a look at it? Don't go near him. Why don't you give the gun to Glenn? He's your son. Surely you trust him. All we want to do is help you. Dad? May I have the gun? What did you find out? Well, I want to wait and hear what the doctor has to say before I draw any conclusions. You're so tired. You've got to get some rest. I'm all right. Well, what was it? Well, we can't say yet. We'll know in a moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all right, doctor. Go ahead. Now, none of you should feel any sense of guilt about the mayor's death because of the shooting. What do you mean? He would have died anyway. It works like this, Powers. That thing on the back of the mayor's neck had two piercing instruments. They attached themselves to the central nervous system at the base of the neck. Now, we don't quite know how it worked, but when the thing was crushed and the instruments withdrawn, they secreted something in the form of an acid. And this acid destroyed the mayor's nervous system. So without the shooting, death would have ensued in, well, what would you say, doctor? 24 to 48 hours. Just enough time for the acid to do its work. You mean if there are any more of these things around and they get on somebody's back, the person will live only so long as the thing is left untouched? That's it. Because once this thing attaches itself to the victim's back, well, the victim isn't human anymore. Are you going to tell the others about this? Well, I have to tell them something. This is to be kept strictly confidential, Doctor. Will you make your report out that way? I understand. If you need me, feel free to call upon me, will you? I will. Thank you, Doctor. All right, we're sitting on a powder keg. Now, I want you to listen closely to everything I have to say and not repeat a word to anyone.
Notify all the men we're on a 24-hour duty. If anybody wants me, I'll be out at the cone. We got off the mayor. Yeah. Reflex action like a snake. Cut a snake in half and the two pieces go off in different directions. How long can it do that? Oh, I see. Until the cellular structure begins to break down, I suppose. Second. Your hands are like ice. Why don't you get some rest? I can manage here alone. I'd feel less guilty if you did. About the parasites. Do you think there are many more of them? Why don't you let me worry about that? Can't you get some rest? I can't. I want to help. All right, then. Let's get back to work. In feeding the mouth parts, rupture the cells, convey the food to the stomach by a, a pumping action. Oh. <laughs> I've got an idea about this cone out here. I don't know why it didn't occur to me before. Yes, can you get out here right away? Yeah, okay, I'll be right away. Well, let's come up with something. We'll have to pick up the others and go right away. It didn't take Kettering long to round up the others. Once again, we were on the way to the restricted area. Weiler had come up with a new angle. Of course, we all hoped that it was a solution to the mystery of the spaceship. As we entered the woods, we discovered that the roadblock signs had been removed from the highway and there wasn't a guard on duty. At least we didn't see one. What is it? Look.
Are you thinking the same thing I am? Hello! Hello! Most modern rockets, those that are in the planning stage today, come in sections. That is to say, you have one section for control room and living quarters. Then you have two more fuel sections. As the fuel sections become needless, empty a fuel, they're cast off. Jettison. Simply dead weight. This cone's a fuel section, is that it? We've been wasting our time. The control section's someplace else. Maybe miles away. Not miles away. Simply out of space. Floating perpetually. Well, we know this is not an American project. This cone is a useless piece of junk. We're wasting our time here. So, it's come down to the parasites. What about it, Kettering? Well, we can't handle it single-handed. I didn't ask you that. My job here is to help keep a damper on this thing. We don't want a nationwide panic in our hands. We've got to keep this thing down to Russell. Now, just how much of a threat are they? Well, some of this is fact and some of it is scientific hunch. Give us a rundown and never mind pulling the punches. All right. They're parasites. That means they need something or someone to live on. On their own, most parasites would die. Well, they tried animals. Why didn't they settle on animals? That's the rub. They wanted more than just life. They tried animals through ignorance. They didn't understand earthly forms. They didn't know which animal, including man, was best suited for this environment. So they experimented. Trial and error. You mean they can think? They chose the mayor. That shows they can think. These things take over a man's mind? He becomes a, a robot? A machine taking orders? Except for one thing. It may not show on the outside. A victim may act normally. Well, they haven't moved in on us in force yet. If we can find out where they're nesting, we may get the jump on them. There's another part of this ship, and we've got to find it. Glenn, this is your town. Draw up a map. Outline search zones. I'll call the sheriff and have him get his men organized. for the state militia. I'll wire the governor. What about the folks in town? They'll know something's up if you call in the militia. You have a local radio station, don't you? I'll arrange for the radio station to make an announcement by having a civil defense drill. Nothing to get excited about, just routine. Well, here's the map. It's not a good job, but it's a map. You're not going to start a search now, are you? Why not? Oh, I just thought. Well, perhaps you're right. Now, I thought we'd break up into three groups. First thing, though, we ought to get the girls back into town. We're in on this, too. We'll search on our own if you won't take us. I'm not going to stay in town all by myself. Okay. I'll change it around. Now, Kettering, you and Alice can take this area. Powers, Dan Walker, and Wyler can cover this area. Elaine and I will work here. And I think we ought to agree. If anyone finds a trace of the other part of the ship, Go to the city hall. We'll meet back there. Nobody should act on his own. We'll need weapons. We have them in our supplies. All right, we've wasted enough time. Let's go. Paul, what if we should come upon something, this other part of the ship? No funny business. We'll report back to the others. 
scared? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't. I think we should have held off on this search. Would you mind telling me why? Because if there's another part of the ship, we do find it. We couldn't do very much about it, now, could we? You don't talk very much, do you? That's why he's my assistant. Now, you take parrots. They're great talkers. Lousy flyers. of his death. The smartest thing for us to do is to get out of here. lesson on how not to conduct a search. I guess we'll call a halt until in the morning. Powers, did you contact the governor on getting the state militia out of here yet? I had trouble getting the telegraph out of bed, but he's on his way to the office now. What are these doing in here? What? These big glass jars. Don't touch them! Unless I miss my bet, these jars are connected with a parasite. How? The mayor is the only person with one of these on him yet. On their own, the parasites can't move around from one place to the other rapidly. They just aren't made that way. They were going to have the mayor plant these jars where they would do the most harm. And in each jar, a parasite. You've hit it on the head, Kettering. Now we know what to look for. We're going to send that water. Telegraph office. This is Powers. Sorry to pull you 
out of bed. This is urgent. Urgent and confidential. Is that clear? All right. What's the message? Governor Clinton, state capital. Governor Clinton, state capital. Situation urgent. Phone me at once. Care of Riverdale. Sign Walter K. Powers. Hello. Yes, I'm still here. Have you got that message? Yes, I've got it. Situation urgent. Phone me at once. Care Riverdale. Signed, Walter K. Powers. That's right. I want that sent direct. It's already there. Good. Thanks for getting out of bed. Good night. Everything peaceful. Here. Spaceship, pure bunk.
still alive. We'll find a way. No, it can't be. If I kill that thing, that means that we have to kill her. And if we let it live, that means that she'll be a menace to everyone else. Where to now? Out to the cone warehouse. Thought we gave that up. I haven't. How about you? I think you may be right. When we got to the ravine, still another mystery greeted us. Dr. Weiler and the others had discovered a dying man who presumably came from inside the spaceship. Kettering recognized the man as Professor Helsingman, who vanished with an entire scientific expedition five years ago. Elaine, there's a medical kit over in the tap. Will you get it for me, please? Will he live? No, but he's going to, as long as science can make him. Why did the thing go away? Why did it leave him? A car with a bad engine. Would you buy it? He's got a bad heart. It's the same thing. That parasite off his back. He'll die in a matter of hours. During that time, he'll make trouble, won't he? He'll be out of his mind. Yes, we'll have to tie him up. Wilder, will you go get us a rope? Came out of that cone. No doubt about that. Yes, but was he in the cone to begin with? Or did he go into the cone? Let's get him to a hospital. We might get something out of him yet. Every minute counts. Weiler, I want you to set up some detection equipment on top of the scaffolding next to the hatch. I want to know if so much as a mosquito goes in or out of it. I'll get right on it. Where were you last night? We could have used you. I don't know. I must have been out of the office. Why'd you take those two men off the roadblock? Let's face it, Kettering. If somebody wanted to pass the roadblock, all they have to do is skirt it. There's plenty of woods on both sides of the highway. That's why I took them off. Well, I want those two men that were stationed up there put down here at the foot of the scaffold. Okay? I'm cooperating. Your name is Helsing. You are a professor of biochemistry at Wallingsford University. I studied under you. What are the parasites? Where do they come from? What do they want of us? You disappeared nearly five years ago. Where have you been all this time? You were given up for dead. Where is Dr. Cole, who vanished with you? Kettering. He knows it's you, Kettering. Get him to talk. You've got to. Helsingman. Are the parasites from the cone? What is the secret of the cone? Carboniferous. 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 Carboniferous age. What's the carboniferous age? 200 million years ago, the coal and oil forming period began. Geologists refer to it as the Carboniferous Age. It was the age of insects. Giant dragonflies, two feet in wingspread. All kinds of insects, mammoth in size. You mean the parasites come from the Earth? They've survived in the Earth all this time? Death. Oh, death. It's not a spaceship. It's from below. Put me through to the governor's office in the state capitol. Who shall I say is calling, sir? Powers, Walter K. Powers. Put me through. I'm sorry, sir. The lines are busy. Well, keep trying. I'll keep trying, sir. Operator? I'm sorry, sir. That line's are busy. The governor should have called hours ago. There's no doubt in his mind as to the urgency of my wire. 
Are you sure it was sent? Positive, that is. Hello, operator. Connect me with the telegraph office. I'm sorry, sir, that line is busy. Well, how about my call to the state capitol? I'm sorry, sir, that line is busy. There's something funny going on here. Hello, operator. Connect me with the uh, water commissioner's office. I'm sorry, sir, that line is busy. All right, operator, thank you. Well, that does it. They've got communications tied up. While Powers and Walker went to the radio station in an attempt to broadcast an alarm to the state capitol, Kettering and I stopped at the telegraph office to find out if the governor had sent a reply to Powers' urgent message. The place was dark. Seemed as though it was closed for the night. But Kettering noticed figures moving about inside. The telegrapher appeared at the door. Kettering asked him about the telegram Powers was expecting from the governor. The telegrapher was angry, his answer abrupt and negative. Kettering demanded an explanation, but was attacked instead. Walter K. Powers in Riverdale. This message is directed to anyone outside the Riverdale area who can hear my voice. I repeat, this message is directed to anyone outside the Riverdale area. I'll go up and check the recording device I set up by the hatch to see if anything's been up there. You two stay down here and map out a plan for searching the tunnel. Well, I don't know if I'd be of much help. I never met a man who thought so little of his own abilities. Hi. Has anyone been up near the hatch since uh, you two boys have been on duty? Not a soul, sir. Why? Do you want one of us stationed up there? No, no, I was just checking. We have equipment up there to detect any movement around the hatch. No one's been up there, sir. You can be sure of that. Where's Kettering 
and young Cameron. Went inside the cone. What? Gentlemen, you have no choice. You may stop there. Well, there's no doubt. You're Professor Cole. I was Professor Cole. What do you mean, you were? Now I hold a position of a much higher order. I presume you're like the others. No will of your own. You take your orders from that thing on your back. There is nothing on my back. That's what it tells you. And these glass pillars. There's nothing in them, I suppose. You speak directly to me. We are in complete harmony. We are inseparable. There is no conflict of purpose here as there is among mankind. We will not engage in combat. No violence of any kind. Why should we? When we can scatter quietly like seeds in the wind. You mean spread like a disease? Like some vile plague from the corruptions of the earth? Our social order is pure. Innocent. It has the exactitude of mathematics. We shall force upon man a life free from strife and turmoil. Ironic that man should obtain his long-sought utopia as a gift rather than as something earned. Speaking riddles, how many more are there in your world? We that you see here are the founders. Though few in number, we shall organize man to aid us in bringing the others to the surface. It will take time. But we have learned patience in 200 million years. We are not so well adjusted. We've reached the end of our patience. Your flesh and blood? Drop it! I said drop it! waiting for. Let him wait. We need the time. Glenn, I've got an idea. You think you can salvage that power truck we saw stopped on the highway? I might. Why? You think you can manage it alone? We've got to stay here and keep an eye on the cone. I'll do my best. What's that thing? It's a harpoon gun, more or less. Air pressure type. Power company uses it to get their lines over difficult terrains. What? Have they tried anything yet? Not a sign of movement. It's too quiet. They're setting up something. I can feel it in the air. Glenn. I'm going down the other end of the ravine. When I give you the signal, you fire the gun. And keep everybody clear of this cable. And when I get over the other side, you secure the end of this cable onto the end of that heavy electrical cable you saw in the back of the truck, okay? Kettering reached a point directly on the opposite side of the ravine and signaled for me to fire the harpoon gun.
Their next step was to tie his end of the wire to a tree. I wasn't sure of Kettering's plan, but followed his instructions nevertheless. I made doubly sure that my end of the wire was firmly tied to the heavy electrical cable from the power truck. Then I signaled back to Kettering and he started to pull the wire on his side. The electrical cable moved out over the ravine until it was strung but an inch or two away from the cone. What is all this, Kettering? What's your plan? You see those lines on top of that high-tension tower? Uh -huh. What about them? Those lines carry anywhere from 60 to 80,000 volts. They'd like nothing better than an easy path to ground. If it did, you'd see some pretty fancy fireworks. The kind that kills. You're going to feed the current in the cone. Sounds good. There's just one thing. What's that? Who's going up there and splice that cable onto it? Suicide, plain and simple. No. I'm against it. He's right, Kettering. I'm not going up there, I can tell you that. And we're not going to let you do it either. Nobody has to go up there. What do you mean? This'll do it for us. We'll shoot the other end of the cable up there. All right, everybody, back behind the power truck. Kettering. Do you want me to stay on? Just say the word. Do you want to? No, but I intend to, just the same. Kettering! Look! Paul, you must listen to me. What I have to say means everything to me. Alice, whatever you have to say, it's not of your own making. No, Paul, you're wrong. I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. Alice, you must come down. There's no time left. There is time, Paul. You can give it to us. Say it. Go ahead. Listen and believe. If peaceful means fail, they'll be compelled to use force. Do you understand? Alice. Will you come with me? I make you this solemn promise. If it takes me the rest of my life, I'll find a way of freeing you. I believe in that so strongly, I know I won't fail. Never. How could I ever think that I loved you? is dead. He gave the order. Fire the gun. I can't. Now you listen to me. Either fire that gun or give it to me. Fire the gun! Live through that. We have to make sure. Let's get at it. You're all dead, every last one of them. No, there's still some of the people in town. I'll attend to that. Watch my dust. We'll get them. Or you don't know what to keep ours. Yeah, Wyler. We've still got a job to do. Come on. 